Welcome to Teach Me a Lesson. I am Elliot GB. First off, thank you so much for listening, for checking out the podcast. Uh, I truly mean it. I've said it before and I'll say it every gosh dang time because I mean it. Uh, you could be doing anything else right now. You could be watching, listening to anything else. We have the world at our fingertips these days and yet you have chosen to spend it here with me and I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Without that, this would just be me recording conversations with people I like and then doing who knows what with it. I don't know. It'd be weird. It'd be weird. Without you, what I'm doing would be weird. So thank you for not allowing me to be weird. I appreciate that. Gold star for you. Uh, as always, if you also want to help support the podcast, you can share it, tell people, repost, whatever. Just shout it from the rooftops. Get that message out there. Say, hey, I enjoy this podcast. Why don't you check it out? It would really really help. One of my goals for this year is to get this podcast to 10,000 listens, um, which is doable. It is doable, but I can't do it without you. In my old podcast, that took a few years to do. So I'm saying, hey, let's fucking, let's knock it out in this one. All right. So I can't do that without you, without sharing uh, what that means. What also would help with that is if you follow it on all social media platforms, we are on Instagram and Twitter at T-M-A-L pod and TikTok at teach me a lesson pod. Again, that is Instagram and Twitter T-M-A-L pod and TikTok at teach me a lesson pod. You can find me on all social media platforms, my personal accounts at Grant Radish, G-R-E-N-T-R-A-D-D-I-S-H. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube at Elliot G-B. And Twitch at Elliot GB streaming usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, that might change a little bit, but just follow my accounts. I post about it all the time. You'll see it. That would be great. Uh, but the even best way to support the podcast would be join the Patreon. If you're on YouTube, look right above my thumb. You can see it. Patreon.com slash Elliot GB. If you're listening, that's E-L-L-I-O-T-T-G-B patreon.com slash Elliot GB. And for just three bucks a month, you can support the podcast for five bucks a month. You get bonus content for every episode. Wow. What a deal. Uh, that means I have to cut stuff out of every episode. I don't want to. Okay. Trust me. Hey, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Except in this case, I did make the rules because it's my podcast, but I got to cut stuff out for time, but it's still great. I still want the world to see it. But I also still have bills to pay. So for five bucks a month, that is the price of a fancy coffee. Just one. You can get bonus content for every episode. For 10 bucks a month, you get the bonus content and you get some sweet merch of mine. I'm working on stuff for the podcast, but things got to grow a little bit first. But again, to support, that is patreon.com slash E-L-L-I-O-T-T-G-B. And I believe... That is all of the fun stuff. What if I was like, man, those announcements are fun. You know, having these conversations, that's, it's a, it's not bad, you know, but boy, when I get to sit down and just read those announcements, wow, wowzers, you know, hey, sometimes I get to do that in a day and then I get to sit in a room and watch paint dry and I'm like, is it my birthday? <laughs> what is this? All right, I'm going to wrap it up there after that sweet riff. Uh, yeah, but let's get into this conversation. I really hope you enjoy it. It is with a very funny and talented comedian and musician. Uh, he also has his own podcast. And yeah, he's just great. My friend, soon to be yours, Mark Boyd. Light years away ahead of where I was, bro. I'm making music. Like I, I, It just hit me that like I got my... I can do this. I couldn't have done this last year, G, if you asked me to do this, bro. Yeah. So it's like... I got my own little studio right here, G. I'm kind of hype about it, bro. Like that's what's I up. didn't even realize until right now. It's so, uh fuck. Yeah, that's um that's like when I left I was like, all right, well, I'm not there, so I got to get my own shit to, you know, be able to keep doing yeah. cuz I was doing a different podcast before. I was like, all right, now I'm going to start streaming and all that, but then once that kind of like settled down, I kind of had that same mm -hmm. moment where I was like, oh shit. Like I can do kind of whatever I, I want to do. Empowering. Yes. You really grab, you can, oh, it's like your brain is like, what is it? And then you find out, oh shit, these are the ideas I have. Okay. Well, I'm not going to do them. You know, this is what I'm 
capable of doing or how I or you push yourself and like, OK, now I need to get all these muscle strength things so I can make something special. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely the same way where I'm like, all right, let me figure out how I can do all of my ideas. Like, I don't like depending on other people. Not, it's not even like there's I just don't like feel comfortable depending on other people. But just naturally, my brain is like, all right, we have this idea. Let's do it. Like, let's just figure out how to do it. And I think especially coming up like with YouTube and shit where you can so easily or even Google. I remember learning Photoshop in like the summer going into freshman year by just googling tutorials and just being like all right i have this idea how do i make it how do i make this shoe look like wood panel i don't know why the fuck i thought that was so cool back in the day but i was like let me just figure out how to do it and then you know you slowly through learning each individual like uh skill or how to do this how to do that then you step back and it's like oh i kind of rounded out i know a good amount about this shit that i didn't think i would before like that's pretty fucking cool you had you was you were you were wood grain you was tipping bro i <laughs> i don't know why i thought it was so cool i was like let me get i'm like picturing the the like picture i made right tipping now on four foes, bro. but it was like some high top nikes and i was like i'm gonna make this look like wood panel and like i i very weird blending techniques but i was like this shit is dope like this is fire um, it's crazy that you talked about, you know, like doing YouTube tutorials and all that shit right off the bat and like things like that. Cause the thing that I kind of learned about or what that has kind of changed me is like process, focusing on process a lot more. Um, and uh, that and many things in your life, but like rather than product, process versus product, that's okay. the shit, dude. Like, um, yeah, you want an end result and you want that thing to look good, but focusing on that and highlighting those things, um, and, and what does that mean? So like, uh, I make music or I do stand up, um, all these type of things. Okay. Well, what is my, what is my, what, what am I doing to get to that? You know? And if I highlight those and I make them and I, what is the word I make them as I optimize that to the best that it can be, you know, um, and highlight that and even share it. Um, it, 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 it honestly makes the end result way better. You know, we all have bot babies. We all have projects that we want, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. And people, I'm not a perfectionist, but a lot of people are perfectionists and that's some shit that can really limit you. You know what I'm saying? You can stop yourself from fucking, from ever putting anything out because it's not beautiful. Right. Um, so that is something you will see me i'll sh i share shit in its ugliest form because i don't <laughs> care i release it because for one it takes away the power it takes away the power of perfectionism to myself it takes away the power once i release it out and it's something it is something that exists the second that you release it yes yeah, in its ugly form but now it is something right mm -hmm. it's not just in your mind so like already there you even bringing people in to the ugliest part of the process is the fire shit bro yeah. you know that is it because it's like now i can watch something in its incremental stage or watch if they see it and it ends up being finished at the end they were along there with you the whole way you know so focusing on that i mean like if i was a multimedia artist or a visual artist i would show me buying all of the ingredients me buying all of the you know yeah. materials i need Right. People be like, whoa, what the fuck is this for? Then I would show as soon as I lay down whatever the canvas is, if it's the floor or whatever. And that doesn't have to be a step by step, but like in pieces. And that just like to me, like. Criticism and or what people have to say, you know, I like feedback is such a huge thing, like especially in stand up and shit like feedback is everything. It's nothing without that. So like music wise and or whatever else I'm doing, I share to a whole bunch of people. And sometimes it's whack. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be real. Sometimes this shit is whack. So they're gonna say, yo, that's booty, bro. Hopefully they say that. Hopefully they're honest with me. I, I feel like the beauty about stand up is that you the audience will not laugh if you do if you trash. 
that's wonderful. Oh, you guys don't like this. Thank you. Now I change direction or I keep going and doubling down. I have mm -hmm. a choice to make. That doesn't happen in music. That doesn't happen in you don't know until a, a movie movies. There's movie critics. That's good. But you don't know until you're done. We get to work on shit slowly, but surely on yeah. stage standard wise. Music is even weirder, you know, so it's like uh, very much <laughs> makes me want to bring people in to where my head is at, what kind of sonics I'm working with, what kind of thoughts I am, what kind of things I'm throwing around in my head, shit like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, it, it, it like, you know, you working on something, you said, I don't know what, I'm touching the bottom of the shit and shit, but uh, like you talked about, you, did you continue with shoes? What, I'm sorry to ask you questions, but did you like continue? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I will be the one asking the questions here. Thank you very much. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I didn't. That was I like it was really just like one summer. I it, like, oh, dude, now that I say it out loud, it's like Kanye being like, lock yourself in a room doing five beats a day for three summers. That was me with one summer just like fucking around on Photoshop and being like, I'm going to make whatever. I, I'm going to see if I can find the pictures, um, but just making like crazy ass designs and like just taking not like kind of like collages but like not as cool as collages like my shit looked weird but it just really I don't know I was just like I like shoes but at the same time I wasn't a sneakerhead because I feel like I watched something like a documentary or something about sneakerheads and I was like yeah no this isn't this is not for me like I like you said I don't know all the names of them <laughs> I don't have the money to like buy all this shit and the crazy thing is i mean i'm from wisconsin so you know a big time to get shoes is christmas but you can't wear them because it's shit outside it's snow it's yes. dirty as hell like so you just got to kind of sit on them and i was just like man i don't know i'm kind of out of it so i didn't i didn't really continue i feel like winters crush a lot of dreams bruh the winters bro I hate and it. winters are so brutal. I grew up in Illinois, bro. You a football player. If you're not running cross country in the cold, yeah. fuck you. If you're not <laughs> running cross country in the cold to get ready for the summer. My imagination can't think that. Yeah. That this right now is going to pay off in the, I don't have that foresight. Yeah. I can't do it. G. It's cold right now. Um, winters will fuck your shit all up. But uh, so you had a design mind. You had I, a design mind. I did. Yeah. But it, let me, let me ask you though, real quick. Like, what's, what's a up? quick a quick backstory on you? Because what I mean, I didn't know you were from Illinois. Maybe I heard that previously, okay. and I forgot. But what's yeah, like? Because yeah. I mean, you kind of mentioned stand up. You kind of mentioned music. Uh, so what's... okay, cool, 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 man. Let me let me. Yeah, I just jump right into it, man. Okay, <laughs> I um grew up in Illinois, right? I was born in Chicago, um, raised like twenty minutes outside of Chicago, south suburbs. Uh, went to a high school. It was a suburban high school, but we had kids from the city, mixed shit, but mostly black, but all different type of black people, whatever. Um, moved to Georgia my senior year, right? Lived with my pops, so got a little bit of the South, which was like just for a blink of an eye, and then went into the military and served five years in the Marine Corps. Like, so was went to Afghanistan, went all over the country, went to different countries, I was flying drones. That was my shit. Um, it was cool, cool ass job, I'd say. Met some smart, weird ass people, you know, like uh, very interesting fucks that are like really weird, smart, but also like dumb in other ways, but mm -hmm. like very interesting like experiences there. Uh, got married while I was in, got out, started stand up, <laughs> got divorced, and uh, moved to LA, bro. That's it. <laughs> Damn, you know, okay. obviously there's details, but that's like a quick, yeah, fast yeah, one. yeah. Um, that's me, really. Damn, so how uh, long have you been doing stand up? I started stand up in 2014, so okay. six going on seven years, okay. But, word, word. You know, you can count a year off or not, but like, yeah, that, yeah, that's I always think that's yep. so weird when people are like. Well, I've been doing it for this long, but with COVID, it's only and it's like that doesn't mean like your your brain just stops thinking in that way, you know? Yeah, I did really still write. You definitely still develop as an artist, even if you're not practicing. So yeah, it's like I, I mean, stand up is you developing as a person. It's a growth in. It's a journey inward. That's also a whole thing we can talk about. But whatever. <laughs> um. So like, I would say yeah. So going on seven years. Yeah. All right, that's what's up. And then how long have you been doing music? 
Um, dude, I just started music last year. Oh wow! So yeah, I already dropped a, a project <laughs> in that first year. I dropped the project, collabed on a on a project with like three or four other people. Uh, started producing, got a whole MPK, a whole like studio in the crib, bro. Um, yeah, that's just been fun. That's just really cool. What got you into it? Just like you always been a fan I've of music, and music. you were just like, I got time. I've always been melodic as fuck, man. I've all I was freestyling in like sixth grade, so like always around music, always have an ear for sampling. So that's always something. Um, but I just didn't start. And every time, what's really crazy is that people used to be like, "Oh, bro, like you can't sample, you can't do that because of these laws." You know, like people limit you and kind of put fear in your heart and tell you you can't do this, and you can't release you can't make money yeah, off of yeah. that shit but you can fuck around and do whatever you want you know so what are you saying i'm not trying to make money i'm just trying to get good so it's like yeah don't rob me of trying to get good when you know what i'm saying yeah, just yeah. put fear in your, their own fears in your heart really i should have been sampling since i was fucking like 14 man that's yeah. when i knew i wanted to but um yeah man that's now i just started last year really been rapping probably recorded myself before but like really actually you know doing tr trying it talk working with music people actually sharing beats with people making shit you know like mm -hmm. actually just a year now so yeah damn that's that's so crazy because i i mean just from following you and seeing the shit that you put out i'm like oh mark's probably been doing music for a long time probably before stand-up bro Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, man. Um, I thank you for that a lot. No, I, I really just started, but I like really, I, I'm not going to say it came easy to me because it's technical as fuck yeah. and musicianship is fucking insane, but I feel like sucking is awesome. Sucking at something that you really want to do is badass because it's like, fuck, I got so many things to learn. And then you get these tiny little breakthroughs this time. And like, now I know how to fucking Put the timing right now i know how to lay down some drums now i know how to rip a drums now i know how to all these little things that you see start making your music better and better that's just fucking it's just it's very synonymous with stand-up i can yeah. artistry along the way all of that shit. kung fu what else whatever it is <laughs> uh so yeah so when you say the process versus the product um which i mean really like it's clicking now just like you said you put a bunch of shit out at all stages, you know, just like, ah, oh, whatever. And, you know, following you and seeing the stuff that you put out, I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. You know, but now that you say that, I'm like, yeah, of course. Like it all makes so much sense. Like you said, it's showing every single step of the way, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of why I started this podcast because that's what I looked for in other podcasts. I'm like, I want to know just like how my brain works, which I also possibly found out last episode, I might have ADD, which makes more sense why I'm like, let me fucking, let me find out every little fucking detail about everything. Um, but I like the, the podcast where people will be like, yeah, this is my story. Like an artist will be like, ah, oh, you know, I was always into music or I was always into to art or comedy or whatever. And then after school, I did this and that, and then kind of bing, bow, boom, you know, and then got to where they are, not in the sense of, because I want to follow that path directly, but more of just like, I'm so interested to see what went into everything that you did. And then also starting this podcast, like what were little tips that you learned that helped you, you know, along that, along that way. So seeing what you put out and how it is just like, cause you'll get on live and be like, I'm going to make a beat and then mm -hmm. just sit there and make a fucking beat. And then that is that's showing that that behind the curtain a little bit that I think is so um, nowadays it's easier to see because everything's more accessible with the Internet and yeah. YouTube and Instagram and all that shit. Um, but still, some people want to they want to hide it. They want to keep it, you know, like this is my they have that yes. insecurity of like, if I let everyone know how to do it, then everyone can do it. And then I'm not as special anymore, you know? <sighs> that whole thing process um first off i need to be doing making a bop mate way more often that is very fun you see me on there fucking up yeah. you see me on there like oh that doesn't sound good and then go and correct it and i'm like i can't 
I, I cannot be embarrassed to do that, right? And you see me, I wasn't learning how to use logic. You know what I'm saying? I'm still learning, but it's like I was learning how to use it, learning, still learning how to use a piano. And I'm like, here's where I'm at. But if I get y'all heads bobbing or if somebody's like, yo, I fuck with that so much, I want to collab live, then I did what I needed to do here today, you know? Yeah. But like um, talking about like not wanting to share with anybody uh, the process. Oh, Kanye, bro. So Kanye, this last album, sh- brought us into the mixing process with the way that he released that. I don't know if you really realize that, but like Mm-mm. him, okay, so he did those, you know, did that thing in Atlanta, did two concerts in Atlanta, did one in Chicago, did one in Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. And he's mixing. He stayed at those places to finish his album, which is the mixing process, which is crazy is that I had an album that I was dropping at the same time and I was mixing my shit too. The mixing whole thing, you lay down an album and do all the fun shit and then engineers go in and like fuck with the the you know the yeah. equalizer shit all the eqs all the everything of the song make echoes do all this little shit put layers in all this type of stuff to make it what the final product is and by all of us saying he's releasing this while he's mixing his album all of us were like wow there's more that goes in to laying an album than just them laying it down and dropping it there's this whole other process and he you know they may not not like they were just like, wow, that's he's doing that, and we're waiting for that now. I mean, if you're a fan, you're just like, okay, yeah, that's yeah, I'll just wait for it. But also, he was like, yo, also while he was doing the out, while he was doing the performances, he was in his headphone, like, yo, turn the shit up, telling the engineers, you fucked up. I told you to do this note, yeah. change this. So he brought us in. It was a listening party for all of us, right? Okay, already fire. On another level, when I would tell, when I told people, yeah, bro people were like, I have notes. Like, these are the things I would change about the album. And I said, that's the things that you would change. Someone was like, oh, dude, I would put this verse here and I would turn this down and not have this. It's like, you want to mix the album yourself, right? And honestly, when I was doing my album, there was two different mixes that one person did and another person did. And one guy was like, dude, drop mine. And the other dude was like, no, drop mine. Right. Because everybody's ears are different. Mm -hmm. Everybody had different notes. And also Kanye gave this thing called the uh, stem player. Right. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a piece of technology where you can literally mix the albums yourself. So let's say I want the beats to I want the drums to drop out and I just want to hear the keys of something. Right. So it's like really things are never done. That's also something you can keep tinkering. I just watched Iron Man, bro. Iron Man is constantly tinkering. It's yeah. The suit is a product, but he's forever perfecting it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like, you know, we got a deluxe album from Kanye because he went back and changed something, added verses, took out cuss words, added things. So things are con- like you have to, if you want to be done with something, you got to say something new probably comes up. You start focusing on that. But like, you're constantly tinkering things, dude. And uh, you can edit something forever if you really want to. Yeah. But like eventually at some point, you want, it, even if it's out, you still might want to still be fixing it, you know? Yeah. So that's my philosophy. Some people feel like, some people feel like, no, you should not, people, it's an experience and you should have to take it the way the artist is giving it to you. You don't get the right, you know, people shouldn't get the right to change it to make it fit whatever they want. Mm -hmm. I disagree with that, but like, I think it's, it's their, that's their right to their creativeness, you know? Yeah. Um, Some people will be insulted if, you know, you gave them a piece of art and that person said, I like this, but I would like to just make it a little personal for myself. Some people would be like, fuck you. Don't do that to my shit. You know? So I just think it's all interesting, man. Um, I like it. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's it's fascinating. I mean, that's, that makes me think of, uh, like when Tyler, the creator dropped, I think it was Igor. Um, Uh I think that was the first album he did it with. I'm a big fan of his. Um, And I think that was the first album when it came out, he was like, kind of gave instructions on how to listen to it for the first time. But the instructions, he did do that. Yeah. And it was just like, just lay in a dark room, put this on, listen to it from beginning to end. No interruptions. Just do that. Um, and then I think he did something similar with this latest album. Um, but 
Yeah, that was kind I of. I think the... call, call Me If You Get Lost is album of the year, personally to oh, me. Yeah. I think that is. Yeah. Um, if they give it to Donda, I even know I like love Kanye. It's still wrong <laughs> musically. Yes, yeah. Like it's wrong. Yeah. Um yeah, Tyler's insane. I'm going to see I'm going to see him see this concert in uh late February, bro. I'm hype. It's oh really? Insane. Yeah, dude. It's at the it's at the crypto, crypto.com. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, dude. Tyler is one of those people too. Like Igor was insane. That bass line in the in the first thing and just sitting in there and it kicking everything off. And just like those <clears throat> having a choir say, yeah, ho, for a good ass minute. <laughs> yeah, ho. That shit is magical shit. And it's just like all these things. It sounds like it's just nuts. It's futuristic and also retro and like all this weird ass shit. It's, it's uh man. This shit is fire. We're just in a great ass time. Um this this what you're doing right now is sick like i just feel inspired uh in general it's like we're you can do what you want bro like we yeah. have this technology is in our hands and we literally can make like it's all it's all at our hands it's all at our fingertips really it feels like that yeah um so um i want to share the book that I got that from, I don't know the book that I kind of got that philosophy yeah. from or what else were you about to ask me? Well, I, I was going to say, uh, kind of, how did you come about learning this or figuring that you, uh, enjoy the, the process versus the, the end product more? Is that right? Is that kind of what you're yes, getting at? Process versus product. Yeah. So, um, like when I first started <laughs> stand up, I real first off watching, watching comedian or yeah comedian and mm. watching um goddamn seinfeld say this is the only art form where you have to learn it in front of a group of people mm. <laughs> like you have to learn it and get feedback in order for you to know right <laughs> what it is nothing else you get to go in the dark and learn your clarinet you get to go in the dark and become whatever else you want to be i have to stand up <laughs> shitty as fuck at this and say it to somebody mm. when i'm at it's worse right so it's like feedback is integral i'm sharing from the first step that i do this so like people would you ever you got you got any friends that say they want to do stand up and they come to you and say i got this joke man and, and you're like yeah motherfucker it doesn't matter until you say it to some people mm -hmm. that might be good but it doesn't matter this doesn't what we're doing right now. I can't give you the satisfaction that you really have. And that person's like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, no, you're not doing it because you have to go out and get that feedback from a person that you do not know and may never see again in your life, which is bizarre. Yeah. And um, like so that already that we're already at stand ups in a raw ass like I, place of like throwing our shit up against the wall and seeing if it sticks. That's just in our heart to do that. OK. Um, that makes us different socially. That makes us different as hell. Um, so then I read this book, right? And it's called Share Your Work. It's by Austin Kleon. Okay. And he has a series of them, right? Yeah, so he goes in and talks about sharing your work and talks about, like, the whole philosophy of, like, making making something and, and bringing people into your process, bringing people in to what your shit is. It's hard to do that in stand up kind of, it's mm -hmm. easier to do that. And what's name is Tyler. No, it's not. No, you record a bit and you share it, right? You go to an open mic. If you record your bit and you share that, Hey, this is something I'm working on. Even if you just say a premise or we Twitter, yeah, it is a new bit. And people are like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Right? Everyone's doing that. So, like, you have that as an opportunity. It's not visual, but, like, yeah, if you have a recording of it, it is. If it's a new if it's a new act out, you know what I'm saying? But just, like, uh, not being afraid to bring people in. Stop being a perfectionist. Stop. Kill the perfectionist inside yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, allowing and accepting criticism but also building a different relationship with criticism. People mm. are going to say shit about your shit, but now being able to accept yourself as an artist and know that people are supposed to say something about it and you're supposed to look at that criticism from another angle, right? They're not saying something about you. They're saying something about that thing that you made and that's not you. And so you should smile at them and say, thank you for even receiving it. 
even if they're like, this is the worst thing I ever said. Thank you for that. Like, I'm, it's a work in progress. You know, I, I like, well, how do I say this? Like, I get in arguments with people because they're like, why would you share that, dude? It's not done. It's these problems. And I'm like, yeah, thank you, man. It's supposed to be that right now, right? In a little bit, I'm still working on it. It'll be fire. I know it will. But like, I, it's like, thank you and also fuck you at the same time yeah. thank you for your criticism also i don't give a fuck what you say because i'm an artist and i actually have the balls to release my shit what yeah. is that thing you're working on <laughs> that's that's an, if it's an artist that's saying it then i say what's that thing you're working on right yeah and i and and then we see where you're at with what your relationship is with that you're not even gonna show me it's fucking in a drawer somewhere hidden why mm -hmm. because you couldn't imagine somebody right so like um that shit is fun. I got things that I I have things. Also, yeah, I want to share everything, but also it's like, you know, some things I can't share because I actually want to put them out somewhere and they're going to be a single and I do want you to go rush and be excited to go listen to it, right? So that's something I got to work on because I want to give everything to everybody, but like I got to hold a few things to a small group because I can't, I'm excited and I want people to hear the next shit and it's getting better and i'm seeing the lessons and also just like i'm you know i'm of that philosophy yeah. so uh clips and like how you want to do it or what little pieces you want to show and now you can formulate that you know or like what are you leading up to something now we're on a marketing thing which i really didn't want to get into but <laughs> that's the whole thing um yeah i mean that so, makes me the nothing like ever really being finished that mm -hmm. I think is you learn that so quick in stand up because yeah. you can literally have a bit that you do for years, years, mm -hmm. and it's the same way every time. And then, you know, you and people say this, too, when they film a special or drop an album, they'll do that. And then, you know, it hasn't come out yet. So they're like, OK, I can still do, you know, some of this stuff before everyone knows about it because it's out and they'll record. And then like a month later, they'll go do you know whatever show they'll do that shit and then they'll be like i just thought of a way better punchline for this joke a new tag yeah a new anything that makes the entire thing that wraps it up to wraps it into your whole life now yep. that yep. makes it so much better you're like fuck now, yeah. i can't even do that now again you know but also you ever seen somebody special and then seen them after and then you see that they've added something you're like they're just gonna do this but then they do something more it's like oh shit that's different yeah. uh yeah it's exciting um i mean i don't i hope it's not like only one thing i could talk about because i do have another one no, um man, we... some some i mean hey that is one share your work be with the pro uh be with the product also like just on some regular living shit like uh I, re I read like letters from a stoic and it's just okay. like all these philosophers that came together and wrote all these damn poems bro about stoicism which is a type of philosophy and like um one thing is like finding a meal or just finding something uh that you can do that even when you have a lot of money uh even when you have everything and you're up because they talk about being rich and being poor. They talk about having a lot of money and then being broke at times mm -hmm. and finding a meal and or an activity and or a way to live that is that you are comfortable with and content. And that contentness is almost better than being super high or super low. Right. Um, it's like at that level when you just feel bored and there's nothing happening and you're not stressed out, you actually are in an awesome place in your life. You know, you just, you're at a place that you were wishing you were at when you were fucked up and at a place that you don't really realize when you're too high, you're, you're unaware of, you're yeah. on the, your level, you know? So it's like, what's that meal that you can eat that's delicious, cheap as fuck, that you can eat when you're poor as a bitch and when you're <laughs> rich, you know, yeah. that is delicious and gives you the nutrients you need and also isn't disgusting and makes you feel like you're eating bread and water, you know, and there's a certain level to that. And it's just like, how, how you know, how smart is it to go grab that when I do, when I just got paid, you know, what a decision that is when I say, I'm going to just give myself. I'm going to just make beans and rice, maybe with some sausage or some shit, or I'm going to make myself this simple thing that is necessary, usually a poor meal, but yeah. also I'm going to make it delicious as fuck for myself right now and enjoy it rich. Uh, I think that that is some good, fascinating thing. I think it's like, 
the idea that you can just have a jeans, jeans and a t-shirt when you're a billionaire, like things like that, what we really need that are just leveling across the fl- ground, you know, clean underwear, bottle of water, things like that that are just necessities. Like, yeah, the shape of it might change, but at the end of the day, it's like the thing you need at that moment and it's leveling. If we're at an airport and there's millionaires and there's poor people and everyone's thirsty and there's no bottles of water, everybody is leveled right there. You know, no one can do shit. And I've been in that situation before. Like everyone wants the same thing. It doesn't matter. The rich person will try and walk up and be like, hi, I'm this, but they get the same answer as the poor person, you know? So it's like, how do I stay in that mindset when I am going through the ups and downs of life? How do you stay that you be reserved? You can try, but it's hard, man. When you're an emotional creature and you got ADHD or you got, you know, whatever else, and it's yeah. hard to focus, you know? So that shit there, it's exciting to say, but I'm still learning these lessons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. now. It's a journey. Uh, being in control of yourself, man. That's, that's some real shit being, level-headed and not getting way too out of the way too up or down not letting myself whatever's going on really pull me out of a situation accepting the reality of a situation for what it is Mm. rather than how i feel like it should be like you know oh i should have this right now and i wouldn't be in a situation yeah but you don't so how can you move from where the fuck you are right now man yeah those are huge things yeah that's a Um, big one i mean i've thought about that a lot lately i've been uh I've been meditating. Do you meditate? Yes. Yes. I've like started to get back into it. Um, and just that, that process of, of being present, which sounds like when you don't really know much about it. Cause I remember hearing about it before and being like, Oh yeah, present, mm, you know, um, um, like all that shit, whatever. Uh, but then thinking about it now, I'm like, it really does change everything because especially when you're in that moment, like you said, where something doesn't go the way you want it to, You can sit there and pout and be angry about it and, oh, it should have been this way, it should have been that way. It's like, okay, but that doesn't change where you're at. You're like, doesn't. You're still wherever. So are you going to waste time and energy being upset about it? Or are you going to be like, man, that sucked? Well, anyways, here we are. So let me figure it out and get out of it versus, you know, sitting in here for however long you want to go on your little pity party and shit. People that thinking right there, um, you know, that's something that you just learn your your own self. Yeah. That's something that you end up having to get to. But like some people say that you're not allowing yourself to go through the process. But it's like, what does that even like? Why is it natural for me to pout? Why don't I actually go to a place of what can I actually where am I? What is it? You know, yeah. I'm tangling with what I could have changed with what I the, the control that I think I have. Right. When yeah. I don't. I really don't have that. I don't have the power in this situation. Um, I most of the time don't. I just am what I am right now. So I have to move from that. Um, and that's what I have to. I, I get in I get in conversations about that. And they be like, you just going to accept that? And it's like, well, we're talking hypothetically. Now yeah. we're getting to this weird ass thing, which is like, you know, try not to try to stay with the situation right now and don't ask me how i'm gonna act when something happens when yeah. it ain't even happened yet you know what i'm saying yeah, let me yeah. let me deal with where we at uh it's huge yeah i mean it, 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 it like it is such a game changer once you once you realize that whether it comes from you know meditation or, or learning about yourself or spirituality or x y and z or it's just like it just dawns on you one day you know, or someone puts you on the game. It just says it just like this. Like, hey, what you just said, I used to decide that I was going to start worrying. I would mm-hmm. just be like, well, now it's time for me to not be happy and just go down this whole path of, of being pissed off and not happy. And just like fucking, you know, in this whole headset set of just thinking about the worst thing. Um, that's not that. That's not it. So those type of things, man. That's really that's really. As we're thinking about it, I'm thinking about things that I just went through in just the last couple yeah. of days and just like how I dealt with them. And I'm just like, was I my best self? This is something you don't have to practice forever. I, yeah. I wasn't, man. Um, and it's tough because you because you hear all the time where people are like, it's a choice to be unhappy or it's a choice to be wherever. And at first it's like, what do you mean it's a choice? Like if my tire pops, of course I'm going to be pissed off. Like, of course I'm going to be mad that I have to like pay this money. And that's not it's not like I'm going to be happy about it. And it's like, but then once you think about it and then also learn the difference between like emotions and feelings, it's like, yeah, in that moment, 
you're pissed off, but like you said, you're going to sit there and dwell on it and waste even more time, more energy, or are you going to be like, fuck, I'm pissed. That's valid because this sucks. This isn't a fun situation, but I'm not going to, you know, then you kind of make a choice like, okay, am I going to let this ruin my whole day, my whole week? Or right. am I going to handle it, do whatever I can to handle it right now? And then, you know, still, I don't know, you can bitch about it all you want. But it's like, that's the thing. It's you get, it's not like you realize this and then you're like, well, it happened. So any emotion that I have towards it or feeling towards it is not valid. It's like, no, it's still valid and you still have to honor it. Otherwise you're just bottling shit up and that's not going to be good either. But you're just choosing not to let it like dictate your whole day or your whole week or your whole month, you know? Right. The person that really put me on that, like it was a cycle that it's, it's, it's there's deeper parts to it. But, you know, you go through a cycle of like whatever emotion you have, whether it's sadness or anger or fear. Right. Mostly it all is fear on a deeper, deeper scale. Yeah, yeah. And then like once you OK, so you realize, OK, I'm like this. I'm not happy with whatever that is. I got whatever feeling I have It's probably because I don't have understanding of it. Right. OK, so if I go into whatever that thing is, and it's like a big ass ball of just muck and nastiness and smoke and wires and things that are all untangled up. And if I get close up to it and I really at, look at it and, and, and dissect why I'm upset with it and or like what it is and I really get close with it, I actually will find understanding with it and and be and then I will be able to reach acceptance. But if I can't get to a place of understanding with whatever that situation is, I'm going to be whatever. If I'm angry, then I'm not at a place of understanding on it. So that's I have to say that to myself, just like, well, why the fuck am I so angry? But I have to once I get to a place of like, oh, shit, I'm mad because of this and I'm not letting myself do this and I'm afraid that I'm going to do this. So it's like, oh, shit. And then there's Sometimes you put stop locks in front of it. Like you set up a whole situation because you're really afraid to go do that one thing that you really just need to go ahead and do. And, you know, let release, take all the pressure out of that. Um, and once that's gone, I was like, oh, OK, yeah, that was nothing. You know, I am curious. So like how I mean, you've kind of like talked about it, but like how have you noticed like these kind of lessons like how they've impacted your life and like your moves going forward and shit because with like the process mm -hmm. versus product stuff um yeah does that like did you really learn that like during comedy and then did that help kind of branching into music where you're like oh i enjoy okay, okay. right okay so first one uh i learned it early on in stand up like as far as share your work stuff mm -hmm. i learned that early on but that it it actually is a um knowing that still that just, I didn't apply that in every way. I didn't apply that to social media until way later, right? I I, I found it very hard to get, I, I kept being like, I wanna get good before I start sharing video, right? Because then you, you meet comics and they're like, oh, dude, don't record yourself, bro. You're gonna bomb, right? Yeah. You, you hear that and then you kind of feel it. You let yourself superstition set yourself out of being like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have a camera. When really getting a good tape is the one of the most important things. Oh my God. Getting yeah. a good tape. Right. And so then when you once you have an opportunity in front of you, you have to go find a good tape. And so you have to go around the mics and set it up. And by that, you know, what I'm saying you should have been recording yourself on video anyway. Right. So but everyone's telling, you know, or you try and do that and someone knocks it over, or stands in front of it. But that's the game is learning how to properly you're low key producing for yourself. How to how do I set it in a way that no one is out of everybody's way? You know, that's the whole thing. Or how do I get myself in a position where I can get a good tape? You know, how do I do that? Like where it's actually lit well, where it's actually nice. Maybe there's somebody holding the camera. What do I got to do? So that's a whole thing right there. Uh, and that's your stand up. And I still am figuring that out. I'm still on a journey to do that. Yeah. Music, it was just like, oh, I can make this in my, make this in the secret of my self and then up, put it up. Or I feel confident enough to turn on a camera. I felt like, oh, shit, I'm ugly today. Whatever. Fuck it, dude. Put up a camera. Set it here. Look at yourself. Because I was doing it right here. You can tell I'm in the place that I was. So yeah. I'm like, put a camera right fucking here. This is your laptop. Point it at yourself. I sat here and talked. Hello, Mark. Hello. Why do you sound like that? Hot. You know what I'm saying? Like dealing yeah. with what the fuck you look like, how you sound. And then like cranking it up just pressing live and doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that was a whole thing of like 
uploading that and like whatever beat I had. And then what I really would like to do is eventually make a beat live, have somebody collab with me and actually drop it somewhere. But that's like a whole step down the line. But it's like, um, what kind of things have I in artistry? You know, what kind of things have I, what I guess if, hmm, hmm, like, there hasn't really been something that I've tried that, I, okay, this is what it is. If I don't have a burning desire to get better at it, then mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to keep doing it. So if it doesn't like make me, I got ADD, which I have ADHD. Part of ADHD is hyper focus. So like, um, I got an embroidery machine in there that I bought during the damn pandemic. Really? I got obsessed with embroidery. I got a whole sick ass idea. Um, and I started embroidering, right? But have I continued to do that? No, it didn't, it wasn't a burning desire. Do I bust it out every once in a while? Not even really, maybe every six months I've taken it out because it's like, you have to get software. It's the whole like little thing, but like, it, it's not because I sucked, but also I was breaking needles. Like I literally needles were shooting in other places because I didn't do the research that I needed to do. And sometimes you think you can just jump into something and it's actually a way bigger learning curve than that. And also the payoff. I don't even, I, with embroidery, you break something, you don't even, it's not even a finished anything to share. Like it's like half of a, half of embroider if you do that. <laughs> so I can't be like, Hey guys, look, yeah. and I, it didn't, it didn't. So I will say that is one thing that I think I sucked at that I spent a lot of money on that I should go if I want to go back or sell that damn machine It's sitting in there. So that is something. But I didn't even really it's, it's not that I, I did finish a few things. So it's not that I sucked. It was just that I didn't sucking is great. I don't look think it's more nothing can really be not for you. I feel like if you just keep on trying at something long enough, I mean, singing, probably not, you know, but like they, it, you could still figure out how to make your voice sound good at yeah. some point. So it's just like if I, if I have a burning desire to do it, I feel like I'm going to just keep on doing it until I do. I get to at least some level, you know, yeah. of, of at least fundamentally good. So, yeah. Word. That's I mean, also that. the <laughs> thing, the thing too about like sucking is once you fall in love with the process or understand, like you said, that everything is a process. Like it's yeah. not, you can't just jump into everything and not be bad at it. Like there are some things, yeah, you can just pick up and be like, oh, I'm actually pretty good at this. But exactly. like nine times, that's the exception. But I think like in <laughs> in this fucking society, man, in this day and age, you know, every everything needs to look effortless. Like whether it's a hairstyle or whether it's, you know, getting dressed or, you know, or like just making everyone wants to be that person that just, oh, yeah, I just picked up a baseball bat for the first time and hit a fucking grand slam. Like, right. I, know, I guess like everyone wants to do that, but that's not the reality of it. And once you kind of get over that and then understand, OK, it is a process. It is like fun to suck. Like I learned that uh, when I got super into it, like when I really took comedy seriously like three years ago when i stopped drinking and then i started writing like uh humor pieces and essays and stuff like that and mm -hmm. i got to a point where i realized like oh the first draft is always going to suck like it is mm. always going to be shit like and it needs mm. to be because you have like this idea up there and if you sit there and like okay how do i make this sentence like perfect if you sit there and worry about that sentence for 10 minutes you've lost half your ideas before you Man. even realize it because you're just too focused so you just got to really be like all right i have this idea sit down and i'll like now when i write shit i'll fucking laugh at how bad it is because it'll be like the boy went outside dot there was a cat in the street dot like it's so and i'm like this is terrible but at least you have like a skeleton to go back to and be like all right now i can spend more time on this now i can spend more time on that i can shape it i can do whatever but once i think once you get over sucking but also like that's a very private thing we're like working at home <laughs> no, i'm not like screen sharing you know to the entire internet it's not like stand up right. where you're on stage right. and you're like all right well this sucks and now like you said everyone in this audience just saw this first draft suck but then even then and that's kind of like the process that i fell in love with with comedy was being able to go out try something see how it goes come back fuck with it tinker with it a little bit 
and then go back out, try it again. Okay, that went better, but now this part's a little weird. Okay, now let me go back, let me work on this part, you know? And some of it you can do in the moment, some of it you can feel where you're like, all right, I got this joke, perfect. And then you say it, and then as soon as you get to the last part, you can just tell you have that feeling like, ah, oh, something else needs to go right here. I need, I need another tag, I need another, like I need some little bit to like ride this wave out perfect. If I just stop yeah. here, it'll, it'll be awkward. But so you can do some of it in the moment. You can do some of it in private, whatever, but nothing goes perfectly to plan or you can't bet on things going perfectly to plan the first time you got to bet on them being shit. And if it does work out perfect the first time, Hey, well, that's crazy. That's great. Now you don't have more, more stuff to do, but you can't really like rely on that to work. And then the same thing, uh, like you were talking about with the tape, getting the good the good tape which is like the comedian's fucking white whale it's just so elusive it'll never happen uh but that is something where it's like you do have to take that into your own hands and i mean one yeah i wouldn't admit or not that i would admit i wouldn't necessarily recommend putting everything out at the beginning but also like no no. But also that's just me where it's like, if you want to be transparent and be like, yeah, this is it. The only reason I say that is because I could see people seeing it and being like, oh, they suck. I'm not going to go watch them. And then it's like, right. You have way more of a hole to dig yourself out of. But if you film yourself, if you record yourself, there's still so many people who are like, oh, I hate hearing my own voice. I just don't, I don't record myself because I don't want to listen to my voice. It's like, you don't have to listen to every set that you just record audio. That's what I do. I'll bring my phone out. I record it or I record it audio, audio only every time. And then I also got a camera. Sometimes it's there. If it's a mic, I don't bring it. Um, but if you get into that habit of recording every set, one, you get over those nerves of being like, oh, I'm trying to get a good tape. So now I'm, everything needs to go according to plan. It's this or that. And you're like, there's a camera. I got to be perfect. You get over that because you've been recording yourself for however long now. So it's just another set for you. But then also yeah. you don't have to worry about someone else having a camera or like you said, or like we were talking about earlier, like relying on other people. I hope someone else can film or even if someone does, how many fucking times have you had someone, I'll record your set, bro. I got you. And it went well. And you're like, tight, this was perfect. And then they don't send it to you for like two months. And you're like, yes, I'm trying to send this out to festivals. I'm trying to send this to clubs to get booked. And you got, oh, bro, I'll, I'll get it to you next week. I'll get it to you next week. And then you know, you're waiting and it's like, that's so, that's kind of taking it into your own hands and being like, look, it's going to, it's going to be rough at the beginning. It might not be how I liked, but then also in that way, you can look back and you can actually, you don't have to put it out, but you can look and be like, oh, I didn't notice I did that thing with my leg after every punchline. Or I didn't notice mm. how often I said, um, when I, phew, mm. editing this fucking podcast, I'm like, if I say, um, one more time, or like pause it's like so you obviously you're gonna be your own like worst critic but at the same time it's shit that you wouldn't know if you didn't kind of take it into your own hands and be like all right i gotta i gotta start doing this i gotta do that but if you're in love with the process it's not as big of a deal you know you're just kind of like yeah i want to get better at this <laughs> so this is what i gotta do dude the first thing that you talked about drafting um, I think it's so interesting uh, because it's like by the time we share, we've already drafted like six times. And that's what right? so many people don't know about comedy. So like yeah. I, I admit, but, you know, before I started, I thought like, oh, yeah. man, it's so crazy. They just have all like they're just they're so funny mm -hmm. and they know exactly what exactly. to say. And it's like nah. dude, that the, the act that you see in a special has been worked for at least a year. Like, dude, and, you know, shit. that's new. The yeah. whole year thing is new. Louis C.K., that's unheard of. Yeah. But the stuff we see usually is 10 years. The first special is 10, 15 years, 20, 16 years deep, bro, of these guys doing this. So, like, for, like Louis C.K. was insane to say, I do a new one every year. That was like some, okay, big crazy dude. What the fuck, you know? Most people cannot are not built like that. And that became something that people tried to do. But that's not for everybody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? One. Two, um, like... The first time, okay, where does a thought come from? You know what I'm saying? Where does an idea come from? You know, uh, how did you, why did you get that? Right? We're all sharing all these experiences. You got 
whatever that premise was zapped down to you from wherever the fuck it comes it goes to your brain you better be able to find a way to capture it in that moment Mm -hmm. right catch that whatever it is put it on a phone put it in your voice memos write it down because it's fleeting it's fleeting it's gone that's the first draft fucking whatever the premise is pussy be tangy that's something that i, I got that, that came to my head right random dude right i did okay. see you tweet that what what where is it going right that's a thought i had to put it down right okay now we're thinking about it what why all these other things around that right i'm not gonna try and work it out with you but like all the things around that i wish it wasn't even that but like that I, to bring that up but just like so many other th- thoughts about that but i captured it because it came to my mind and i'm able to now like work with that. I tried it on stage, got laughs the first time. I, the first thing I said, okay, we have something here. You know, what am I writing now? Now I can freestyle. Well, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, if it's a draft, that first draft, it's in its ugliest form, but that you don't have to share that. But also, that is, you got to do the tinkering and shaving down to get whatever the fuck's in there. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy because the things that we like about comics all artists are them carving out a being ultimate themselves i feel like comics especially they like a bit a uh whatever bit is that person's like and it's like because they did the work to get their voice out you know yeah. out of them whatever that thought is and they kept on digging in to find out what their voice sounds like what makes them funny what exactly their type of train of thought is what's the type of lifestyle they have and what's premises that they kind of work and like here you know it's like very uh it's a journey and like of course it's gonna suck the first time you get it but that i just wonder how much genius Okay, how many funny people are walking around that are getting premises that are not they're having funny thoughts, but they don't know to write those down, you know, like everyone, everyone, every comic, especially has that friend where they're like, this person would fucking murder like this. They're like, you know, I know I'm funny, whatever. It's my job. But this person just does it like they are always the funniest one in the room. Yes. But to them, it's just like, eh, it's whatever. I just have weird thoughts. And it's like, no, yeah, but bro. the thought of them getting on stage would fuck them all the way exactly. up. Exactly. The thought of getting on stage and saying that to everybody, they would become not funny. Exactly. And yeah. being funny in the moment and then being funny on stage. But also, yes, there are hilarious people that if they somehow can just do whatever the fuck they do and do the work to do that on stage, dude. And it's like, we're never going to get that. That person's not. I think about the guys that are hilarious in jail. Think about how many <laughs> funny ass dudes that are in prison that are killers, dude. Oh, yeah. that's funny. I said killers. But that crush, <laughs> whatever you want to say, <laughs> that are hilarious. There's, that are killers. And, well, I mean, some of them are. Some well, of yes, them are I also, mean, they, you know. They're aware. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> it's all, it's, there's paperwork. Um, but uh, yeah, 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 dude. I think about that type of shit, man. Well, was uh, were those the only books that... Um, that you fucked with yeah those are the two those are the two that lessons that i prepared you know what i'm saying yeah. um uh, not lessons things that i got and that i was like able to bring up and actually get in the night get to say out loud properly you know what i'm saying um yeah man this was fun as fuck dope well I, yeah i appreciate you being on i do have uh two quick segments at the end you can okay, do one up? you can do one or the other you can do both it's okay. up to you. Completely up to you. Uh, what's like a quick, what do you think the meaning of life is? Or what? what is, uh, I guess, most important? What do you think is the okay. most important or whatever? Uh, quick, like 10 seconds, you know, doesn't have to be super detailed. And slash or what's a simple pleasure you have? Like an example would be for me updating my phone apps. I don't know why it brings me so much joy. When there's an app mm. that I use every day and there's an update, I'm like, let's fu- let's go. Let me see. Let me see what's new. What's going on in the streets? Hmm. The meaning of life, G. Um, <laughs> just a little segment here. No. Nah, um, <laughs> okay. The meaning. The meaning of life, uh, man, is probably uh, building, having uh, connections. You know, I think, um, you know, 
having the relation rebuilding relationships with people like hopefully you end up uh with a, a friendship at some point and or even on a routine like just people uh relating to each other and having interpersonal things and they don't have to develop into something huge but like you know you have a routine and you're lonely but you go outside and like every time you see somebody they're like saying what up saying hi to you or giving you good service or like remembering you and things like that or like telling you remembering your order or something like that that's the shit that pushes everything along bro like that familiarity or that oh this is routine and this is how we push ourselves along from day to day uh i think that that is that and uh because we're all changing we're aging so things are like this for a moment but slowly but surely everybody's get it's all changing until the next thing happens and the next thing happens and the next thing happens and it all ends you know so it's like uh, the familiarity along the way that's it bro because if i'm walking past the exact same street i'm really never walking past the night same thing any day you know mm, so yeah. it's just like that shit um I mean, th- that can get bad if you're fucking walking past and being a dick every single day. <laughs> then This has changed. This has changed. This has changed. So that's that's romanticizing it. But if you're a piece of shit and then everybody's an asshole, that's also the progression. So I don't know. It's like, I don't know if there's a B, but it's like the mix between present and also the fact that things are never changing. Yeah. That shit. But I don't know what to do with that. But that's it, though. Um, um, there's that, uh, a, a guilty pleasure, man. Not, not a guilty, guilty pleasure. Simple, no, just a guilty, simple, a simple, pleasure. simple, simple. Okay. Not guilty. Don't, don't, don't do guilty. Uh, um, okay. Guilty. I don't care. No, no, no. A simple, a simple ass pleasure, man. Uh, what is a simple pleasure? I like planning out my day and then executing all of the, all of the things. So like, hey, I'm gonna do this and do it and all efficiently and like stopping on the way. Like I could have went one route, but I went this route because I'm gonna do this and like saving myself time yeah. and or money and doing it the best I can. That shit makes me, that's like, yo, I'm I'm winning so hard just because I know all these little details. Yeah. Uh, that little shit. I like that, man. That's what's up. I like that too. I like efficiency. That's like my whole Yes, like you kill two birds in one stone. We can go there and there because they both got that thing we need. Like yep. rather than drive it, that shit is fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so yeah, that. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, uh, what do you want to plug? Where can people find you? Okay. Uh Rastafari Unicorn uh is my IG. I got a link tree there. Um, Playboy Marky on Twitter. Um and I got a link tree there, so you'll find all my stuff on both of those. Um, that's really it, man. I mean, Fresh Jays podcast is still going. That's the thing. Um, I got more music dropping. But besides that, man, oh, come to my show, man. If you're in L.A., come through. Uh, it's I got two shows. I got one in Koreatown called Parking Sucks, you know. Uh, and I got one in West Adams called Johnny's Johnny's Pastrami, Pastrami Comedy. So it's a fucking vibe. It's, it's dope. We had a DJ. We did a show yesterday. We had a DJ. It was cracking. There was a baby in there. It was very fun. Um, oh, so yeah, jumping, bro. It's getting better. That's what's up. That's yeah. What's up? Well, Mark, thank you for coming on. Very nice conversation. Good to catch up. Same. Yeah. And thank you for and listening. You should come do my show sometime, bro. You should jump on. I want to book hey, put you on, bro. Down. Let's do that. I'm down, man. Let me add him. Let right. me let me add that baby. I'm gonna make that baby laugh. <laughs> Did the baby yeah, laugh I think at all? He's German too. Huh? <laughs> I said, did the baby laugh at all? <laughs> no, the baby was cracking up and slightly heckling. But really? you know, yeah, it was a cute, it was like an on time heckle. He would like scream right at the end of a joke. It was it was perfect. It's Germans, uh, man. Germans are fuck they're punctual was, people. Man, bro. It was it was wild. That's he had a hilarious. little buzz cut. It was nuts. Um so yeah, man. He had a scar. No, I'm just playing. Uh that's really it, man. <laughs> You're smoking uh, it was a great cigarette. chatting with you, bro. <laughs> and uh dude, yeah, dog, we'll talk another time, man. Peace, dude. Thanks for letting me do this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time when we're back with another great guest and another great lesson. All right. Bye.